Let's talk about the first ever James Bond film, Dr. No, as we start the summer of 007. <laughs> Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews presents the summer of 007. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around I'm starting off the summer of 007, which I'll be reviewing all James Bond movies except for except for maybe the, the original Casino Royale and uh, Never Say Never Again. Okay. So, we're going to start off with Dr. No, released in 1962, directed by Terrence Young, based on Ian Fleming's 1958 novel of the same name. <coughs> the first film to star the late, great Sean Connery as James Bond 007, along with Ursula Andress, Joseph Wiseman, and Jack Lord, who would later go on to be a big star on the original TV's Hawaii Five-0. Anyway, the film was produced by Harry Saltzman and Albert R. Broccoli, a partnership that would continue until 75. Anyway, Bond is sent to Jamaica to investigate the disappearance of a fellow British agent. And the trail leads him to the underground base of Dr. No, who is planning to disrupt an early American space launch from Cape Canaveral with a radio beam weapon. Now, as a lot of us all know, Casino Royale was actually the first book to feature the character of James Bond. Anyway, this film makes reference to later books in the series as well, such as the criminal organization known as Spectre. Yes, which, that's a familiar act, and what have you. So let's get into the story. John Strangeways, the station chief of MI6 in Jamaica, is murdered by a trio of assassins, along with his secretary, before his home is ransacked. When news of Strangeways' disappearance reaches M, the head of MI6, he assigns intelligence officer James Bond to investigate the matter and determine if it is related to Strangeways cooperation with the CIA on a case involving the disruption of rocket launches from Cape Canaveral by radio jamming. When Bond arrives in Jamaica, he is accosted by a man claiming to be a chauffeur sent to collect him, but is really an enemy agent sent to kill him. Before Bond can interrogate him, the agent kills himself by buying into a cyanide lace cigarette. After visiting Strangway's house, Bond confronts a boatman that Strangway was acquainted with. The boatman named Quarrel reveals that he is aiding the CIA and introduces Bond to their agent, Felix Leiter, who is also investigating Strangway's disappearance. Bond learns from Felix that the CIA traced the radio jamming signal to Jamaica and that Strangways was helping to pinpoint its exact origin. Quarrel reveals that before Strangways disappeared, the pair collected mineral samples from an island called Crab Key. Or Key. Crab Key. Sorry, my mistake. Upon finding a receipt from a local geologist, Professor R.J. Dent, Bond makes inquires that... Well, well, with him about the samples in Crab Key, but is suspicious of his answers when he, is, he claims the samples checked out as normal. Following the meeting, Dent travels to Crab Key to meet its reclusive owner, for whom he works, to inform him of Bond's visit. Under strict instructions, Dent attempts to have Bond killed with a tarantula. However, Bond kills the spider and sets a trap for Dent. 
When the geologist arrives, Bond holds him at gunpoint, revealing that he believed Dent was asked to check Strangway's samples to see if they were radioactive before killing him. After checking Quarles' boat with a Giger counter, Bond determines that Strangway's must have suspected that the radio jamming was coming from Crab Keys, and so convinces Quarrel to take him out there. The following day after arriving, Bond meets Honey Rider, a shell diver. When armed men arrive on the island, Bond and Quarrel take Rider with them and escape into the swamp. At nightfall, the group encounter a flamethrower-equipped tank disguised as a dragon to deter locals, which incinerates Quarrel. Bond and Rider are kidnapped and taken to a hidden base, whereupon they are swiftly put into decontamination due to the swamp being contaminated with radiation. After being led to private quarters set for them, they are rendered unconscious with drugged coffee. Now to the final act and the ending of the movie. You know the procedure like always. <clears throat> You've got five seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below to avoid the ending spoilers. If you've seen the movie already, please continue on after the five seconds are over with. Okay, now I'll cover it. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Upon awakening, the pair are escorted to dine with the base's owner, Dr. No, a Chinese-German criminal scientist who has a prosthetic male has prosthetic metal hands, excuse me, I've said my mistake, due to the radiation exposure. Bond learns that Dr. No was a former member of a Chinese crime tongue until he stole $10 million in gold and now works for the secret organization SPECTRE, which stands for Special Executive for Counterintelligence, Terrorism, Revenge, and Extortion. That's a mouthful, huh, folks? <laughs> Just playing well. The radio jamming being conducted by Dr. No is being planned to disrupt Project Mercury's space launch at Cape Canaveral using a radio beam, which he states will be a demonstration of Spectre's power. When Bond refuses to join the organization, Dr. No has Ryder taken away and Bond imprisoned. However, Bond manages to escape his cell through an air vent and disguises himself as a worker before infiltrating the base's control center. Bond discovers that the radio beam being prepared to disrupt the launch is powered by a nuclear pool reactor and overloads it as the launch commences. Dr. No attempts to stop him but falls into the reactor pool and is killed. As the base's personnel evacuate, Bond frees Ryder before the two escape. <sighs> the island by boat, moments before the base is destroyed. Felix finds the pair drifted to sea after their boat runs out of fuel and has them towed to safety by a Royal Navy ship. However, as Ryder passionately kisses him, Bond lets go of the tow rope to embrace her. Yep, that's, that's Bond for you. James Bond, that is. In the story. So what did I think of Dr. No? Well, I gotta say it's a great start for a great franchise that has been so big for us for almost the last 60 years. Well, yeah, because next year will be the film's 60th anniversary, but I'm doing it early in ways. Because, after all, with we us finally going to hopefully get the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die, this October. This is why I'm doing all these movies. I will say Sean Connery nails it as Bond. It's just one of the one of the greats. He is one of my favorite Bonds. And he will go on to do several other movies and what have you. Ursula Andress plays Honey Rider. Very good actually. But um now our spoken dialogue was dubbed by Nikki Vanderzil, but and her singing voice was dubbed by Diana Copeland, but they were uncredited, however. Next, Joseph Wiseman plays Dr. No. Very good. Jack Lord playing Liar, as I've already mentioned. M is played by Bernard Lee, who would be the original one for most of the Mon movies until his passing. John Kitzmiller plays Quarrel. And Anthony Dawson plays Professor Dent. 
There'd be lots of others as well. Let's see. Um, now, we also have Lois Maxwell as M Secretary, Miss Money Pain. She'd be the original. And Pierre Byrne plays Major Boothroyd, the head of the Q branch. Of course, he was the actual original Q, uh, his only appearance now, until he was replaced with Desmond Llewellyn. And of course, he was brought in by M to replace Bonds Barretta in 1934 with a Walter PPK. Yeah. But anyway, I really did enjoy this. Everything in this was really good. And of course, we always like them introduction to the character through the view of a gun barrel and a highly stylized main tile sequences, both of which were created by Maurice Bender. Or I mean Binder. It, is a, it also established the iconic James Bond theme music, which that was really cool. I mean, you can't have a good movie without something like that. Plus, the score by my no Norman is good, too. So, every, so from my point of view, Dr. No is just so good. I liked the action, I especially liked the, um, some of the atmosphere, I especially seeing the underground layer of Dr. No's, which it was really cool. Anyway, Bond was going to be a big household name in pop culture. Going to have numerous spoofs as well of, the, of, of spies to follow in this, such as Get TV's Get Smart with the char character of Maxwell Smart, as well as um, the Derek Flint movies. Sorry, James. Uh, oh, dang it. Sorry, everyone. James Coburn. Sorry. I forgot his name. My, my mistake. Yeah, uh, uh, which that came out three years later after this came out in in Our Man Flint. And then, of course, everyone should know Austin Powers series with Mike Myers. But anyway, Dr. No, great movie, great characters. Most of them we would see in later Bond movies, next few anyway. And great score, gr good story. So would I recommend Dr. No? Hell yeah, you gotta check it out. Dr. No is definitely really a good movie. I even got to hear a kind of a slightly toned down family friendly version of it on a book and recording from Kid Stuff. You can find that some people have the, that on YouTube, so check that out if you'd like. <laughs> Alright, but anyway, what are your thoughts on Dr. No? Please tell me in the comments section below. And if you like this, click the like button below, subscribe to my channel, be a part of the Big D Nation. And join me next time when I bring to you a review of the second installment of the James Bond franchise, and that will be From Russia With Love. Thank you for watching, and if you like this, you may want to check out uh, my reviews of the first couple of Austin Powers movies. In the upper left-hand corner is the one I did for the first one, Austin Powers International Man of Mystery. And the upper right-hand corner is the one I did for The Spy Who Shagged Me. Or... If you would like to just try to watch something that may not be spy-like, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my recent review of Pure Rabbit. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.